Welcome to another update. This is our miniature horse Salem. For those of you who have followed me for a while with my vlog, you will know that this is our driving mini. You have seen him before. And um, he is a very, very sweet, sweet horse. We've had him about five, six years, and he is 15 years old. And one thing Salem loves to do, he loves to drive. If I don't drive him for a while, he gets very sullen and depressed. He would like to go driving every day, but I don't drive him every day. And he can easily pull 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. And over here, you will notice I have two lines. This is a typical lead line that's attached to his halter. And this here is the tie down. I will put this on him and that will stay attached to him until I release him when we're ready to take him for a drive. And I am going to be harnessing him the way I was taught. I had a driving instructor and this is the way he taught his students. He was a very, very uh, accomplished driver. The first thing I'm going to do with Salem is I'm going to put on what's called the saddle. And this part is similar in some ways to the saddle of a horse. This part here goes over top his back and this rests right behind his withers. And this goes up over top of his rump. This is the saddle. And just like a saddle has a girth, this also has a girth. So I'm going to attach the girth. Now, when you're attaching the girth to a harness, you do not need to have it as tight as you have it when you attach a saddle. It just needs to be snug. It does not need to be tightened. Um, it needs to hold the harness in place, but it does not need to be as tight as you would have the girth with a saddle. And there is one other strap underneath right here that you will see me attach after I get the cart on. This is to keep the cart from flipping up over backwards. And the shafts of the cart will go through here, but this is the saddle. And coming back here, this part here is called the breeching. I do drive with the breeching. And that keeps the cart from bumping into the back of the horse when you stop, one of the things. And this is called the crupper. The next thing I do is I gently lift his tail up over the back of the harness and I gently put this under his tail. And I try to be very careful that none of these little hairs, you can even shave your horse a little bit here and here to keep the hairs from pulling when you attach the crupper. And the next thing that I put on with the harness is I'm going to put the collar on, the breast collar. And this is what goes over his neck and horses don't actually pull the cart. They lean into that breast collar and that's what pulls the cart. And this is my breast collar. And incidentally, my harness is biothane. It is not leather. I really love biothane harnesses. And that's what this is an American made biothane harness. And I'm going to detach this here and gently put this part up over his head and this rests back here. And these are called the traces or the tugs. This is, these are the straps that are going to attach to the cart. So I'm going to gently lay them over his back until I get the cart pulled up. Lay this one over his back there. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this second line on him. I'm going to put this around his head. You don't want to have your horse attached to the bit part of your harness when you have them tied. And of course, you can also do this without tying them up to a post. You can also do this with, you have what's called a header. And that is a person that is standing in front of the horse to make sure the horse doesn't spook or walk away when you're trying to harness them. And this gets attached right here. Okay, that's attached. And the next thing that I'm going to put on is the head stall, the bridle. I'm gonna take his halter off and lay it there. And this is, I have a very simple bridle for Salem. And these, of course, are the blinkers. Some people will drive without blinkers, but most people drive with blinkers. And I'm going to wait for that jet to go by. And um, the blinkers keep the horse from spooking from something behind or to the sides of them. But Salem was trained with blinkers, so I drive him with blinkers. And this is his, um, this is his little head stall. Which he takes very easily. And a lot of times if you drive, and Salem has a thick forelock, a lot of people will braid their forelock so it's not tangly. You can braid it. 
but um, I usually just take it and I'll twist it around a couple times like this and tuck it under the brow band. Now, when you're driving um, minis, a lot of people that drive minis also have what's called an overcheck, which is attached here and attaches back here on the saddle. I do not drive with an overcheck um, because when I show, especially if I go in a, um, a show that is the one time I showed in a driving club show, they do not allow you to have the overcheck on. So I usually do not drive with an overcheck. But that is the, the head stall and the bridle. And then this is the just a typical throat latch. And I attach the throat latch next. It's the next thing I attach. And there. One of my keepers is missing on this. This should have a little keeper on it that way. But that is the next thing I do with harnessing my horse. The next thing I attach are my lines. These are lines are actually correctly, correctly stated because it's just me driving one horse. They, these are the reins. And I was taught, now people have different opinions. I was taught to have this part away from the horse so it doesn't pinch them. Some people don't like it this way because they say it can get caught on something. But my instructor told me to have this part away from the horse. And then this gets fed up through these rings. One. They're called tarots. Through two tarots. You go up through the tarot rings. And then I make sure that the horse can't get tangled on this. Walk carefully behind him. And I the way I did that, I made sure that this did not get twisted. And then I feed it through the tarots on this side the same way. And this gets attached to the bit on this side. And you always want to make sure that your reins are, the rings, if you have the ring going this way, you want it that way on this side. If you're going to do it this way, keep it the same on both sides. So those are the reins. That's the next thing I put on my harness. And I take this and I kind of double it up here. The next thing I'm going to do is put the cart on the horse. And when you're bringing the cart in, I was taught to, I always tell Salem, coming up, I tilt it up this way. You never back it, I never back my horse into the cart. I was taught to do it this way. And he's not quite standing right. Come on, buddy. Stand up. Stand up. Coming up Salem, and I bring it up this way, gently lower, and I slide. These are the shafts. I'm going to slide them through the shaft holders. Because he's a mini, I can easily reach over and do the other side. That's the next thing I do. I've got the cart, I sit in here, and the next thing I put is the tie down. This is that tie down strap I was telling you, telling you about. And again, this doesn't have to be terribly tight, but I will show you why this is on here. I have the tie down because when you sit in the cart, you wanna make sure this can't flip up backwards. You wanna have something to help balance it and to keep it from flipping up over backwards. Not really balancing. The cart should be balanced anyway. This is a really well-balanced cart. We've got it from a cart maker out in Illinois. And the next thing we're gonna, I'm gonna put on are the traces. These are called traces or tugs. These are what are gonna attach to the cart. They go through this little space here. Make sure I don't get it tangled on that. And then they go through, these are called breaching straps. It goes through there and I have a yellow jacket visiting around me. And this attaches over here. It's called the spring tree. It goes there and this is the lock on it. It's a piece of rawhide that locks through. I had just attached the trace and it's important. My instructor taught me it's always important after you attach the trace, you don't put the breaching on yet. You go to the other side. Unless you have somebody helping you that's doing it at the same time, you go to the other side and you attach this trace first before you attach either breaching. And at this point, I like to take the reins and put them over top of this part of the cart. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other side. This is the tug or the trace. I'm going to feed it through that little space. And then it's going to go through the breaching straps. And I'm going to attach it to the spring tree on my cart and lock it in place with a piece of rawhide. Okay, I've done that. Now after the traces are on, the next thing I'm going to do is attach the breaching. I'll show you on this side, you'll be able to see more easily. And this is the last thing. This is the breaching. 
that's always the last thing you do. So you wanna put the reins on, you bring up the cart, you put the traces on, on both sides, you put the breaching on, on both sides. And then the last thing I do before I drive, I go like a checklist in my mind, like a pilot would, I always double check. I check to make sure the reins are securely attached to the bit. Tear it one, tear it two, up and over. I've got the trace going through the right space and going through the breaching strap attached securely and the breaching is attached. I go around when I walk behind the car, I put my hand here in case he backs up a little, I don't want to get rammed. And I do the same thing here. I'll say, okay, get, tear it one, tear it two, ring. And then I have the trace on this side securely fastened in the right place and the breaching. And then there is a correct way and an incorrect way to get into a cart. One thing when you're driving, the driver is always the first one in the cart and the last one out of the cart. To get in the cart correctly, you wanna hold your lines. You always hold the lines in your hand. You never get in a cart without holding these. You make sure that they're secure. And you wanna get in, you don't wanna jump in, but you don't wanna take your time. You wanna get in and sit down right away. I step up, I sit down, I have my lines securely. Now, the one thing I didn't show you, I do have a driving whip that I use. I don't have it with me, um, but the driving whip is used as an aid. It's not used to whip the horse and make the horse go fast. It's used as an aid like you would use um, your legs if you were riding. You gently touch the left side of the horse or the right side, and they learn what that means. But driving horses go a lot and almost exclusively with voice commands. So I'm just, and you don't go smacking their bump like this. You know, a lot of times you see on Christmas movies with Santa and his reindeer and smacking. You don't do that. I just will ask Salem to trot and he normally will go right into a trot. Salem, trot. Trot, trot. And there he goes. And of course the driver always sits on the right side, not never on the left. If I drive alone, I will sit because I have a mini and my cart is not that heavy like a big carriage. I sit in the middle of my cart when I am driving by myself. So I hope you enjoy getting to know Salem a little bit. And he's coughing because I think he had a little piece of grass in his mouth when I put the bit in. And uh, I'll take him in a figure eight. He's just get, getting a little bit warmed up. But he loves to go. He is, uh, he's just fearing to go here. And I'm gonna turn him gently. You never wanna pull them very sharply when you're driving. You don't wanna flip the cart. It's a little bit different than riding. When you, if you're used to riding horses and you start driving, it's always uh, a little bit of an adjustment to make. And because Teddy's so close to the fence, I'm not gonna go real close there. Up, up, what's the matter, buddy? And I'll take him here and then I sometimes take him outside of, I usually like to take him outside of the arena, but I start on walk, good boy. And uh, I'll take him outside the arena and take him for a little walk along the woods. And uh, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about how I harness my mini and enjoyed getting to know Salem a little bit better. And uh, I hope to someday, you know, in a couple years to be able to drive Teddy. I think Teddy is going to make a really, really, really nice driving horse. So I hope you have a great week. If you haven't subscribed to my channel and would like to follow my updates each week as I show you how I'm working with Teddy and show you some things with my other two horses, my mare Stormy and Salem, um, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified. And if you enjoy the videos, share with a friend. And I'll see you next week at my next update. Bye for now. Thank you.